Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to the BFG. And I need to specify the 1989 version, which I did not know existed. Um, the BFG is a Roll Dahl book, uh, the same author who wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, among other big name children's stories of the time. Um, obviously, Chocolate Factory is his big one, but... The BFG was made into a Disney movie a few years back. I don't remember exactly which year it was. And I didn't know there was an original. Apparently, yeah, one came. Uh, there was a version that came out in 1989. And the thing is, this is one of those Royal Doll books that I never read. I don't really know. Um, I only found out it was a Raw Doll book after the Disney version of the movie, the more recent version, came out. So, all I know about this is that BFG stands for Big Friendly Giant. There is a giant in it who is older by human standards. I don't know how giants age <laughs> in this mythology because that's different based on different mythologies um different uh worlds and stuff different authors um so but he looks to be older and there's also i think a young boy who i think is probably the main character and that's pretty much the extent of my knowledge i don't know what the story is actually about I don't know what to expect here. Um, yeah, it's it's something that I was never really interested in when it came out. Uh, when the, I guess you could say, remake came out. The Disney remake. It was just something that never really grabbed at me, you know? Um, I didn't necessarily think it looked bad or anything. It just, it, it just never got my attention. Um, so this one was an unexpected choice for a donation reward, but not an unwelcome one. I'm definitely interested to see what this is, because I don't even know how well the Disney version did. So I, I have no idea whether or not this is any level of popular amongst people. Um, I've seen many stories with giants in them. Um... Of all different kinds and all different, like, I guess you could say alignments. <laughs> uh, I'm see I've seen stories with evil giants, with good giants, with all kinds of stuff. And so it's like there's not really anything to go off of there. Um, other than the title saying Big Friendly Giant, so I assume he's a good guy. But other than that... I can't really say because the title doesn't give anything away and again I don't know the synopsis I don't know what to expect from this film um, I do believe I did hear that this was British um, that I, I guess uh, it was a British production um, I don't know if that's 100% uh, true um, but I, I believe that when I was looking to get this up, I very briefly saw that. Um, but again, if that's all I know, then I'm going into this pretty damn blind. <laughs> and, I, and I'm good with that, as always, because as I, as I say, going in blind can often make the best reactions. Um... I feel like reactions are more genuine that way than when you know even a little bit of what's going to happen. 
No, I mean, that doesn't mean reactions will be bad if you know a little bit of what's going to happen, but still. <sighs> Either way. So, I'm interested to see what this is about. Um, it's from 1989, so... The animation quality could either be still pretty good for that time, or not so much. And I and I feel like there's no in between. It's either like surprisingly good or surprisingly bad in terms of the animation from that time. Um, and I have no idea which it's going to be because I I've seen animated stuff from that period that has been very noticeably uh one or the other and it's it's like you wouldn't be able to necessarily tell um unless obviously it's something like disney and that in that case it's going to be like oh yeah this is going to be great <laughs> but yeah I'm, I'm definitely interested to see what this is um see what this is like and hopefully i end up really enjoying it so uh, we're just going to get on with this, hope for the best, and see what it has in store. So, when the screen fades black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Um, because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, uh, that being said, uh, and before we begin... Just in case I forgot to mention, <coughs> excuse me, I felt that coming, but I also knew it was coming really quick. In case I forgot to mention, I don't, my memory is shot. In case I forgot to mention it, uh, this was a donation reward, m most movies are, from Venom0027. Just want to make sure I mention that just in case I did forget, because I can't seem to remember right now if I did. I just woke up not that long ago. Please excuse me. Um, either way, all of that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So, I looked up a little bit in between. Uh, the newer movie, the Disney one, came out in 2016. And I, I, I kind of want to see that one now just to compare it, uh, but I, I feel like the story is probably almost the same, so I don't know if that would be good for a reaction, because it's like, I know pretty much what's going to happen. I, I feel like that would be something better to watch on my own time and like maybe compare and contrast on my own. Um, because, like again, as I've said in the past, I want my reactions to be as blind as possible, and this wouldn't be even if they change quite a bit or, or or modify a bit to make it you know like work more for like the modern era i guess you could say um it's still gonna be altogether the same story and same ideas and everything uh so that being said um i i also found out that this was the only adaption of one of Roald Dahl's works that was released during his lifetime that the, that Roald Dahl himself praised. The single only adaption of one of his works that he liked that was released during his lifetime. Obviously, we don't know of anything released after that if he would have liked or not. Um... But he and his family went to a private screening, apparently, and following it, they actually stood up and applauded. Like, they gave a standing ovation. And, as it even notes here, that Roald Dahl was very vocal about not liking things um, when he didn't. Um, and, it, and it mentions specifically about how he didn't like the Gene Wilder, Willy Wonka, and the Chocolate Factory adaption of his book, which is really famously known. Like, it's really well known he did not like that adaption. Um, I wonder what he would have thought of the uh, Johnny Depp version. 
Um, and, and then, speaking of the more recent one, apparently, uh, in 2016, uh, Louisa Melor on Den of Geek uh, mentioned that the 27-year-old at the time animated feature may be less of a technical feat than the 2016 version uh, and was certainly made for a fraction of the budget, but that doesn't make it any less of a wopsy whiffling raz twizzling tribute to the terrific story. So basically noting that uh, it's just as good as the 2016 version, which yeah, again, they're probably very similar. I doubt there's a lot of differences if there is much of any. Um, so again, that's probably why I just, I, I don't feel the need to react to the newer one in comparison. Uh, so that being said, let's talk about the actual film here, though. Um, my general thoughts on this is that it was, it was good. It wasn't great or anything. It wasn't anything spectacular, anything like exceptional no it wasn't um it, it was good it was enjoyable it was fun it was cute <laughs> i i had no issues with it um it had a very simple easy to digest story uh likable simple characters all that jazz my only issue with it is that it kind of like glamorizes the British royal family and it's like that's kind of mm, not really fond of that because if you actually know a lot of the truth about things um, the British royal family is not to be praised they're not good uh, but the, then again they're royals so it's like that's not a surprise uh, you really really can't truly get behind royals or rich people in general uh there are some exceptions out there but that is definitely the exception to the rule um but yeah that's that's my if that's my only real issue with this film it's like it's not even that big of a thing because it's like a lot of movies have portrayed um the royal family as being you know glamorized and everything it, like just not really acknowledging you know the colonization and horrible shit they've done and stuff um but like a film like this of course it's not going to so it's like that's not really surprising by any means um but yeah um that's really my only issue like i said everything else was was good um, Sophie as a character is, again, very simple. And all the characters are very simple. There, There's not a lot to them. But for an hour and a half movie, clearly targeted towards a younger demographic, towards children, like, they don't really have to make it anything, like, super complicated. Um, Sophie is a really simple girl. She's an orphan who's in a bad situation ends up getting taken by the BFG, the Big Friendly Giant, and makes quick friends with him uh, and helps him uh, reach out to the Queen of England in order to help put a stop to the evil giants who are just violently eating children. And on that note, there, this was dark. <laughs> like, that is one thing. Like, this was clearly... For children and all, and I don't know how the book is, but holy shit, this was actually really fucking dark. Like, it doesn't show anything, obviously, but there is notable child death in this. Like, that, that boy who we saw them give the dream about, you know, turning invisible when he presses his belly button and all, um... Like, we saw that the, the, the one evil giant was about to eat him. They distracted him temporarily. But it's, I think, very much implied that he did finish the job and probably ate quite a bunch of children around there as well. Like, there's that kid is probably very dead. And 
for all we know, he probably never even knew. Because it looked like it looked like the giant was going to use that one long uh, fingernail claw, basically, to probably impale the kid and, and pull him out that way and then eat him off of it. That That's kind of what it, the vibe it gave. And it's like, and if he did that, it's like the kid would probably be dead, like, practically instantly after that happened. And he, like, would have never woken up and everything. So, Jesus. <laughs> And it's like, it's in the newspaper in the morning, like after Sophie visits the queen and everything. And it's like, all these kids are just slain. And it's like, I think it's even implied, I might be wrong about this, but I think it's even implied that there's like actual carnage left behind. Like, it's not just like, oh, this the children disappeared. Um, It, it, it kind of, imp there's kind of implication, I feel like that there's, that they know that the children were violently murdered. And if the if the giants just came and took and ate, like, the children whole and everything, I, I, there would be no implication of that. They would just think the children disappeared. So the fact that they know the children were slain means that there was, there was gore left behind. And that's really fucking dark and fucked up. And I again, I don't know how it was in the book. I don't know if that's how Roald Dahl wrote it. But if he did, it's like, Jesus, dude. And I've read the book for Charlie and the Chaga Factory. And yeah, there's some dark stuff to that, too. Um, but not to that level. Charlie and the Chaga Factory was never, like, that bad, all things considered. But this, it's like... Holy shit. <laughs> I just, I, I don't understand how they could market something like this towards children when it actively implies violent, gruesome, bloody, gory child death. It's just like that would, if I, if I read something like that as a child, I would probably be traumatized. Or watch the movie or whatnot. Like, Jesus. <laughs> um, but outside of that, and, and I'm not saying that as a, uh, as a complaint. I'm just, like, noting that, yeah, that's very dark. Um, I actually kind of enjoy dark stuff in, like, cartoons that are targeted towards children I, I think it's really interesting and uh can sometimes be just really entertaining to watch just from a shocking standpoint i mean obviously like it it's upsetting to see stuff like that in anything especially though like a cartoon like this but it's still fascinating at the same time to see that they put that in there and how notably so they did. Um, it was interesting that they made such a visual difference in design between uh, the big friendly giant and the other giants. And I don't know how, like, how many illustrations or whatnot the book had, so I, I don't know if like that was all like based on the original designs from the book. Um, but that's a like a really notable difference because there's there's 10 giants total the nine human eating giants and then the bfg and the bfg is the only one who looks like that he he looks like a like a friendly old man and he's notably very notably smaller than the other giants as well and the other ones look like monsters, humanoid monsters. They're gross, they're horrifying, like they have like red eyes or even the like different colored eyes. They have fangs, they're constantly drooling. They have like gray or green skin that's like saggy and they have the claws. And it's like, why is he so different? Why is he so much smaller? Why is he more sophisticated? in his speech and appearance, I, I assume 
that these giants don't procreate or anything. I assume it's considering they all appear at least masculine and male. I I mean I can't say for sure. I don't know like they're they're mythical creatures obviously. So it would be hard to just assume anything in that regard, but I I I assume they're just like maybe like ancient entities that have just always been around. That's kind of how I've always viewed giants in a way. Um outside of stuff like One Piece where they are given more of a you know lore to them. But like mythical like giants in like storybooks and all, like Jack and the Beanstalk is an example. I've always viewed them as like these kind of ancient beings that have just always been around. That they that they don't age quite the same as like humans do. And that they don't really worry about being killed or anything or procreating. They they just are. They just exist. <laughs> and again, I don't know like what the de what the idea is here. I don't even know if Roldal had an idea for that. Probably not. But it's just that that just makes it a little confusing. And again, not really a huge issue, more of a nitpick if anything. A little con it just makes it a little confusing as to what the deal is with the BFG and why he's so different. I mean, it's not super important to the story, but it is a notable visual thing. Um and then we have just the entire dream stuff like the the idea that he like captures these dreams from the dream country and uses his horn uh to blow them into kids minds and everything is like okay it's a little weird but uh, harmless and seems to be nice and he keeps bad dreams away um which kind of raises the question how do people actually have bad dreams then because it's like you can't just expect it to explain that people just don't have bad dreams because they very much do <laughs> um it's like does he occasionally allow one of those to go to be used i, I don't know but the bad dreams themselves it's like what's the deal with that why is he so afraid to unleash them it's like just because they're bad dreams and he doesn't want to upset people but bad dreams can very much be important in some ways if you have bad dreams about certain things they can actually help you protect yourself in real life be cautious about certain things like, I've, for example, I've had things that have been worrying me in real life about multiple different kinds of topics, such as meeting new people or getting into new situations and all. And I've had bad dreams about them that have, like, almost felt like a warning to me. Like, don't get into this. It could be bad for you. And... I, I come to find out, maybe not right away, but somewhere down the line even, that that those dreams almost kind of came true. Not maybe to the exact degree, but I've had dreams about people that, again, felt like it was warning me that they were bad news and come to find out, even, again, if much later down the line, they were bad news and situations that went wrong and so on and so forth. People always wonder if dreams can be, like, prophetic in a way. And, like, so many people have told stories about they've had dreams that have come true to some degree. And I, I, I don't think it's exactly that they're prophetic. I think it's more along the lines of your dreams allow you to see what your waking mind will not. Like, for a person, that might be, a ba like might be bad news. You might subconsciously know that they're bad news in real life and so when you're dreaming it's like that subconscious is allowed to basically like tell you that 
that you're seeing what you already subconsciously know. It's just coming out because of your sleeping state. That's kind of how I've always viewed that kind of thing. It's, it's something that you already know and just don't realize you know, or don't want to admit, or so on and so forth. So there's just, there's just a lot with the dream stuff in this that I kind of wonder about. Um, and obviously there's a lot of like silly words in this and everything like that Raul Dahl is used in multiple works. Like you, you see any adaption of Charlie and Chocolate Factory, you read the book, you hear about like scrum diddly umptious bars and stuff. And it's like all kinds of stuff. Oompa Loompas, obviously. And there's all kinds of goofy words in here too. And I, I want to actually check something because I was thinking about it and, uh, and it's actually something I genuinely want to know based on um, what I was talking about during the reaction. So the book, which apparently is illustrated on the cover, which does look very similar to this movie, I guess. Not completely the same, but similar. Uh, the book for the BFG came out in 1982. Um, Roald Dahl himself did not do the illustrations, though, apparently. And it's an expansion of a short story from his 1975 book, Danny the Champion of the World. It's dedicated to his late daughter Olivia, who died of measles at the age of seven in 1962. Okay. Um, but the, the book came out. The book is like that, that inspired the movies, came out in 1982. Um, so when did Charlie and the Chocolate Factory come out? The book for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory came out almost two decades earlier in 1964. Okay. So, the BFG came out 20, almost 20 years afterwards. And was, again, dedicated to his daughter Olivia, who died in 62. So, then I assume the scene in the BFG where they're farting and lifting themselves up in the air and singing and everything, I assume that is based, that that is a, a reference to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory's fizzy lifting drink. It's gotta be. Because it's just... It's practically the same thing. But, I don't know, let me check here. want to check something here because I've read the book like maybe twice and it's been a long time okay the fizzy lifting drink in Dahl's book we hear a story about it an invention of Wonka that made the drinker float into the sky one particular Oompa Loompa consumed someone was able unable to burp and floated away yeah that was mentioned in the uh, Gene Wilder movie I believe I don't, I think the fizzy lifting drink was left out of the Johnny Depp one for some reason. In the 71 film, things take a different turn with Grandpa Joe and Charlie drinking some just after Wonka's warning. So that part was uh, for the film only, but the, the drink was mentioned in the book. Okay. That's what I wanted to check because I, 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 I didn't remember like exactly like how it was featured in the book, but so maybe in the BFG, since he since it wasn't originally in the book and everything, 
maybe with the BFG he wanted to showcase something similar to that, but actually like show it. That's kind of my thoughts on that. Um, now I don't know any of the voices to my knowledge for uh, for this movie. Um, at least none of the names are familiar. And like when I highlight them here on uh, Wikipedia, like it doesn't like show any roles that I would really know them for. Um, but yeah, it's it, it was an interesting film. It was cutesy. It was fun. It had a nice happy ending, even though you kind of question. It. It's like, what she's gonna eat? It? What's she gonna eat if she's living with him? She can't survive on uh, on those uh, snozcumbers or whatever they're called. Uh, th there's no way. So unless they like bring food back, like maybe the Queen of England gives them food to bring back. It's like that would be fine and i assume they're going to come visit every now and again but and of course they'll be back to deliver the dreams but still there's a lot of questions that just arise here i feel and again I, it's mostly nitpicky stuff it's nothing that i'm really like upset by or anything but it's just a lot i'm wondering about maybe that's just me maybe that's just how my mind works um but either way I would love to hear your thoughts on uh, this movie. So let me know uh, what you thought down below. And thank you so much uh, to Venom0027 for donating for this. And to everyone else for continuing to check out the channel and the content on it. Uh, for now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.